Hey guys, it's Matt here from The Ball Call, and today we're going to take a look at LCID, what we should be seeing for this week, and any upcoming news. Alright, so let's get right into the video. But before we get into the video, guys, if you guys can just go quickly take 10 seconds out of your day, go down below, click that like and subscribe button, click that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all my latest posts, that would be wonderful. So let's get right back into the video. Alright guys, so let's actually take a look at the 4-hour charts. And let's just take a look at the charts before we go into the news, which I want to get into right after this. So, uh, obviously, we've been really awkwardly in an interesting position because this yellow line is an inverse head and shoulders, which is bullish. And this blue or purplish line, whatever you uh, want to call it, it's more on the bluer side. But this is a head and shoulders, which is bearish. So, there was actually both going on almost at the same time. Uh, and I think it was more on the inverse head and shoulders because I feel like it matched it almost perfectly here. Uh, and it kind of, you know, kind of went away from, you know, a, a head and shoulders here. But regardless, either way, it's not doing it. It's not pumping and it's not dumping. Uh, obviously, it did dump off here, but it did not. It, it bounced at a reasonable area, a little bit lower than the first shoulder or what could have been the first shoulder. And you know, it, it, it's really not, it's not trading off of this, you know, presumed breakout or breakdown, uh, which is really interesting to see. And I think that this is only going to make this LCID, you know, stock just more of a interesting play because it's more based off of news or trading volume. So we can take a look at the news right now. Uh, I did see on Instagram, if you want to follow me, I think it's the bull call on Instagram. It is in my description down below if you go to my links it should be in there uh, and so here obviously on the lucid motors web pa uh, instagram page you could see that they opened up a brand new luxury uh, experience uh, studio in scottsdale arizona so this is really really cool obviously there's a whole you can like there was a whole lot of people there i think this yeah, it was two days ago that they opened it and you know there was people all like, looking at the car i think this is just you know, all you have to advertise. And I think that's one of the harder parts about this is advertisement. And, you know, being on, you know, the just being on TV and being on Instagram and all these other places, you need to keep, you know, putting your brand out there so people can start seeing your cars, seeing that people like the car, hopefully, you know, and how fast they get delivered and all that kind of stuff. And just how well that the car is overall overall valued compared to like Tesla and other cars and Rivian, and all these other companies that are trying to do the same thing or, or you know, similar things. I, th I still think that Lucid and Tesla are, and maybe, you know, Neo in, in China have the best, the best technology, especially Lucid Motors with their battery technology. I think that that's fantastic to see. And, you know, obviously you have, you have to have some kind of what you're good at, you have to be. It has to be shown in your showroom. It has to show what your what makes you better than a Tesla. Makes you better than any other company. Obviously, right now, no one knows. Uh, we still don't know. I mean, you know, we can always, you know, obviously they're gonna say this stuff, but we 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 never tested it. We haven't seen, you know, a YouTuber test the battery from you know full to zero. You haven't seen all of that. You have to see, you have to wait and see and you know wait for these deliveries to come out and fully you know people just being in the car for like a month, a, you know a good month. You want to see how people really like the car, using it every single day for a whole month. Then we'll get an idea of how well these cars are. I still think that obviously we can trust what they're saying, and I think that you know they still have one of the best technology and batteries. But, I mean, this, this is still, you know, I think this is a great step towards, you know, building their brand. And I think that's one of the hardest parts is building that brand. Uh, but, yeah, so we're going to take a look at the news article in a second here. Okay, so uh, here is the article on Investor Place. This is basically going over how the EV industry is, you know, projected to surge. And, and this is only, you know, obviously, to, don't just put your, your politics on the side, whether you like or don't like Biden. I'm not going to say if I do or don't. I don't want to get into that. But I'm just saying, personally, not, not personally, but for this company, Biden is actually helping by, you know, trying to make all these EVs seem really cool and all that kind of stuff. I think that just further shows that, you know, if the president of the United States likes EVs, why can't I? And I think that really shows, you know, that EVs can be massive, 
you know, and obviously all these tax returns and tax, you know, all this kind of taxes being taken off and it being cheaper and you don't have to pay for, you know, uh, you know, to charge your car. I think that's, that should be a no brainer, especially if you're trying to get these people to move over as fast as you can. Yeah, it might take a little bit longer, but if it's free, people will do it. People will do it if it's free. Uh, you know, it's always going to happen like that. So, you know, obviously Biden had a, you know, some kind of, uh, automakers, you know, meeting at the White House. I did watch a little bit of it. You know, it's just talking about GM, Ford, and obviously uh, Tesla and all that. Like, most of like, the bigger companies. Uh, he didn't really talk about, I don't think, Lucid in the actual presentation. But, you know, it just kind of falls underneath all of EV. And if you look here, only about 2% of vehicle sales in the U.S. are electrics, which is crazy to think about. Even when, I mean, it depends on where you live in the country, but where I personally live in the country, I do actually see a lot of Teslas. I do see a lot of Mustang Mach-E's. I see, uh, I just saw my first uh, Honda electric vehicle. I'm sure if I, if I really looked, I probably would have saw it earlier. I just, you know, noticed it the other day and I'm like, wow, there it is. Uh, you know, you just, when you just look around, you're like, wow, there's an EV, there's an EV. But I, I guess it depends on where you are in the, in the, in the country. And I'm sure since I'm closer to the New York area, uh, I think that that's probably where and why there's a lot of EVs. And I think that with with Biden trying to push EVs, I think that that's really helpful and really good. Giving, you know, tax breaks and all this other kind of stuff that really make people have the feeling of buying an electric vehicle. I think that really, really helps. And like I said, whether you like Biden or don't like Biden, he is definitely taking steps to help us as a EV investor. No matter, no matter, it doesn't even matter what EV you invest in. This, this could help you on a daily, on a daily basis, or, or you know, on a long-term basis, because you know he's 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 a president for the next three years. So this is just really, really good for us EV investors. And I think that long-term, I think, I think a good, you know, projected percentage is probably around fifty percent. I don't think it's ever really going to get much higher than that. Maybe maybe 30 50 years but i feel like give it 10 years maybe 15 20 i think we'll have close to 50 percent electric vehicles but it really depends on how expensive they are and that's the problem right now when you look at you know buy a tesla buy a uh, obviously lucid motors they're much more expensive than any other car and i think that you know general population especially in the middle of the country or less populated areas with you with lower income, it makes it so much harder to be able to afford and find, you know, even charging. Some places don't even offer charging. Like uh, my cl closest charging to my house is about, I would say about 10 minutes. It's a Tesla charging area right next to a Dunkin' Donuts. And I, I only know that because I've seen it trying, trying to go to Dunkin', but People don't don't always know that it's there, and I think that that's another problem, not being aware of where these charging places are. People might be like, well, there's no charging places nearby. Well, maybe there really is, but in the middle of the country, there may not be. There might not be one for 30 minutes, and then you're kind of screwed unless you have a charger in your house, which I think, again, you have to almost pay for it. Uh, so I, it's like a back and forth trying to go electric, non-electric. It's just, it makes it harder sometimes, but I think that this, like I've said, is really, really good that he's trying to push EVs to a, you know, brighter side. Obviously, there's some drawbacks, you know, obviously what happens if you lose, if you run out of charge, but it's it's like anything else. You're never, are you just randomly going to run out of gas? No, but it, I guess it can, and I guess it depends, you, you have to be careful. You can't just submerge your car in water all the time. I don't know how safe the batteries are being in you know, uh, a, a, a potential flood area. I don't know how well they really stay, you know, waterproof. I, I don't know how well that really stays. We don't know. We don't know after maybe 20 years or 30 years, do the, does something kind of break and then batteries start, you know, getting water in them? We don't, we don't know because we don't have enough time. And I think that time is what the EV market needs. And I think that or even, you know, it needs time or money or both, really. It needs time and money. And I think mostly time because people need to be adjusted to it. People don't always want to jump into change immediately. So if you give it some time and you, you put a lot of money into it and there's 
you know, the option of having a $25,000 Civic or a $25,000 Tesla, but one's going to cost you a thousand or whatever per for gas and one's going to cost you zero for electric charge. It might, you know, throw a person either way. And, you know, it, it's hard to say that a Tesla is better than whatever car you want to say, because, you know, uh, obviously a, a V8 is going to sound nicer than an electric, you know, motor. It's just it, that's the way it's going to be. I mean, it depends on what you personally want. Obviously, as a younger person, you probably want something that's loud or more aggressive. And then when you get older, you're like, well, I don't really care. So I'll get a Tesla cheaper, you know, better for the environment. And, you know, it's quieter for, you know, the children. So it really depends on, you know, where you are, where you are at in life. And I think that Teslas and all these EVs are hard to push to the younger population. I think that that's probably the hardest part that they're going to have to get over. But I'm pretty shocked by this number, about 2%. I think that that's going to at least go to 15 in the next th five years. And then maybe hopefully get to 50% in the next 30 or 20 years. And I think that that's a pretty good part, uh, you know, target for EVs. And I think that this just has a lot of built-in you know, ready to go. I think the Tesla, not, not that it, not that it's overpriced. I just think that it has a lot of this built in a lot of this fear of missing out a lot of this FOMO, a lot of this hype of EVs becoming the greatest. And I think that that's why even Neo has a lot of, you know, obviously went up almost like a thousand something percent last year or whatever it was. But I think that Lucid Motors still has that ability to finally take off and finally get these, you know, green, green days and green months, green years. I think that we have a, a, a pretty good starting area. And I think that we could totally go off this starting area and, you know, grow up to the 200, the 300 or 400 or 500 level. It really depends on how well the car really is, obviously. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much for the, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I just wanted to quickly go over, uh, Lucid, the price action news and this, uh, article about, only 2% of vehicle sales in the U.S. are electrics. Uh, but yeah, so I'll pretty much I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.